Louvado seja o nome do Senhor. Nós saudamos a todos. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite the brethren to stand up. We're going to read the word of the Lord and Ezra. Ezra. It is in the middle of the Bible. And before Nehemiah. On Sunday morning. First Chronicles. Have you, has everyone found? Chapter 8. For I was ashamed to request for the king and his court of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because, because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. Now, verse 23, so we fasted and straighted our God for this, and he answered our prayer. Amen. Lord God, we ask that you apply your word to our hearts. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My bread. we are studying the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a contemporary of Ezra. So, in other words, they lived in the same period and they lived the same situation there. Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah and Ezra, they could have been made into a single book because they speak of that moment in which they were going back from captivity there in Babylon where the people of God spent 70 years in Babylon. They went, they went, they were exiled. They lived their moments, the difficult moments, away from their nation, away from everything that there was uh, away from everyone that they used to live with and of all, all their customs they had you know, the place where they had learned to seek the Lord to go to the temple sacrifice to the Lord adore the Lord and now as they are going back to Babylon as a consequence of a life 
in which they distanced themselves from the project of God. So the Lord allowed them to go to Babylon in order to go through a period in their lives. And that's how our own lives are. Sometimes God even allow us to go through situations that that they are not designed to humiliate us or to cause us to be defeated, but it is for us to learn something. The Lord wants to teach us something. The Lord wants to, to, us to give worth to the things, to, to what is His project. So when man begins to distance himself or herself, God will never forgive that person, never. But God begins to work on that life. And so that's exactly what happened with the nation of Israel. God had no pleasure in allowing Israel to be taken captive, but it was necessary. It was necessary. And when they arrived there in Babylon, they were they had to face situations that were very difficult. Firstly, Babylon was a nation, was a pagan nation. It was a nation in which they believed in on every type of God. It was a nation that had profane customs to the point of uh, their in the book of Psalms. There's a psalm that says that they were there, camped, and the people of Babylon kept asking them, seeing a song from Zion. We want to hear. And then the, the psalm says that they didn't have the strength to praise the Lord. And the Babylonians, they wanted to hear the Jewish people to sing songs from Zion. But they were in such a difficult situation that they hung up their hearts. It led them to a moment of weakness, spiritually speaking. It led them to a moment in which a few of them ended up uh, being committed of apostasy. Because Babylon, it was difficult. It was an environment. It was a difficult moment for them because remember that when Paul uh, arrived in a, in a certain city of Greece, Athenas. And when he began to visit that city, he noticed that there, there were so many idols that Paul was perturbed. He began to be upset. Ainda mais 
Hear more. When you think that it was a nation that was taught to give praise to a single God, the God of our fathers. That's what the Jews always said, the God of our fathers, of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. So this God has taken out of Egypt. This God has been with us. The God, this God performed wonders. So now they learned how to praise this God. So then, when we go back to the story of Paul, when Paul was brought to an amphitheater, because the citizens of the time, they liked to uh, discuss and give speeches. So then they brought Paul to this theater. And there, there were there many authors, many authors to pagan gods. And when Paul passed beside by an author, that author was empty. There was nothing representing a god on that specific author. It was written, this is the author that was destined to the unknown god. And then Paul said, this is the God that I serve. This is the God that I've been speaking about. It is not a dead God. It is not a God that has been made into matter, but it is an invisible God. It is a God that I feel in my heart. It is a God that I feel in my life. This is the God that I serve. Because for I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Ezra, when he went back from Babylon, all the way back to Israel, to Jerusalem, after they had already rebuilt the walls, they rebuilt the city, so then Ezra came, returned with a group, and he, according to the word, it registers that he felt ashamed of going to the king, of requesting soldiers and horsemen to defend them on their way back to Israel, to Jerusalem. So then he was ashamed. Why was he ashamed? Because they had already testified to the king about that God. They had said, hey, God, King, you know this God, you know the God that we serve, it is the God that opened up the Red Sea. It, it is a God that brought down the walls of Jericho. That's the God that we serve. And he was ashamed. How can I now go to, in a more colloquial way? What, what face am I going to go to the king and say, King, I told you that my God does this, and he opened up the Red Sea, that he brought down the walls of Jericho. 
Yes, you told me. Yeah, King, but you know one thing? I'm going to speak a little s softly. I'm ashamed. But I need, I need your army. I need, I need your help, King. Because on our way back to Jerusalem, what if the enemy attack us? What is going to happen to us? But the word said that he was ashamed to approach the king and ask him. But then what did he do? Then we fasted and we asked this to our God. And he answered our prayer. So he said to the group, his entourage, we're not going to ask the king. What we are going to do is fast. We're going to pray. We're going to seek refuge and help to our own God. And Psalms 20, chapter 7, says the following. Some trust in cars and others on horses, but we will make mention of the name of the Lord our God. One, one bow down and falls, but we stand up and remain standing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because we trust on the Lord. Because on our path, on our way, we should not be afraid. Because God is with us. The psalmist says also, even if I walked in the valley of shadow death, I would not be afraid of any evil because I know that the Lord is with me. We do not have to depend on the king of this world. The study last Sunday school spoke about this, that we should not depend on the king of this world. I know that we, we live in a context which is very difficult. There are moments in which you even think, like it was said here, there are moments in which the disciples in that crossing, they said, Master, are you not worried that we might die? Master, don't you see that the boat is going to sink? That we are all perish? That we are all going to die? Of course, the Master is aware of it. The Master is seeing it. He's not going to allow anyone not a single one of his faithful to perish or to have any necessity unfulfilled. I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the just perish and his descendants beg for bread. Be why are we speaking about this? It's not just because I came with this uh, out of my hand. Because, no, because the Lord gave a vision. A couple was getting ready and they were putting garments 
Deixa pés. Correto. Tudo assim. Para. You were getting all dressed up. In order to look. Like they were. Um, homeless. They were beggars. So then. The angel invited them to enter into their homes and pray and they opened up the, the Bible and as they did that, they began to see on the pages of the Bible, they would see instructions and they began to walk inside of their house and they would meet, they would find a briefcase with a great treasure inside. My brethren, many times the solution is very close to you. Jesus is close. The treasure is very close by. It is near us. And we need to seek solutions and psychology and philosophy we are trying we begin we want to read books oh, self self help books uh, 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 teach us how to to be uh, victorious, but we f they forget about the Bible. You're forgetting about the Bible. The treasure is so close by, but we want to go far away to seek the answer to our problems. We want to do like that woman that had a flow of blood. She was perishing of this illness. She was losing she was losing blood. Blood speaks of life. And this woman she was losing life. And that infirmity was causing this woman to grow weaker and was bringing her closer and closer to death. And the word says that she had already spent, spent all her resources. She had already gone to many doctors. We're not here preaching. Uh, making apology for the person not to go to the doctor. But what we are saying here is that our God is the doctor of doctors. Jesus is the doctor of doctors. Right? So that woman, she was there. She spent all her resources and she was unable to find a solution. But one day, she had a meeting with Jesus. And the word says that that woman, she came, she pushed the crowd to decide what was between her and the Lord. She broke through by faith. And many times, we need to go through the crowd by faith break the barriers. Oh Lord, that problem, oh, there is no solution for that problem. But that woman, she, her, she thought the opposite. If I only touch on the garments, on the rim of Jesus' garment, I will be healed. She thought, and she did place her faith, she put her faith in practice. So, because I was ashamed, for I was ashamed to request of the king 
an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him so we fasted and entreated our God for this and he answered our prayer God when we pray uh, the vision says that when this couple they enter into their own prayer room to pray there was the solution there it was so when God God's heart is moved for the prayer of the afflicted because the word says that God does not despise the afflicted and the needy God never turns his back to, the, to them if they pray to the Lord and place before the Lord their trust like he says give your ways to the Lord trust in him and he will do all everything else do not fear do not be afraid of the enemy that is in your path because our path is Jesus and Jesus is the path, the truth and the life Jesus said look you do not you do not need to be afraid the one you need to be do not be a, need to be afraid to, to the ones who kill your flesh but you need to be afraid against the one who kills your your soul this is the one that we need to be afraid of may God bless us God does there's no want any one of his children to be begging we do not need to be to beg because we have a king of a, have a God who is rich a God that has provided all things bless be the name of the Lord
to Jesus. Hallelujah. I invite the start the church to stand up. We can say that to this day the Lord has helped us. Amen. Trials we're going to have always. But when we have trials, we have the assurance that we're going to have victories. Amen. Because the more the Lord put us through trials, the more we are approved. If there is no trial, how can you know if this student is doing well in school? Isn't it true? Every month you have a test. Whoever goes to school, or whoever used to go to school, when he came the end of the month, there was the test of the month. I need to get ready for the test. Right? Study the subject. So then you would do the test. Trusting. Well, I, I studied that. Uh, that one I know. That one I know. Uh, top of my head. So then at the end of the, the test, the teacher would tell me, you got A, A plus. You have been approved. Amen. So the servant of God goes to trials. But the servant of God gets ready, fast, prays to the Lord. The of God seeks the Lord in that situation. How many times we come into the church and we begin to pray? Oh, I'm facing a situation like this, and the Lord reveals, look, go to a period of early dawns or period of prayer or go to a period of fasting. Spend a period of seeking the Lord. And then afterwards, after time has passed, that brother or sister comes back and says, My brother, or to Jesus, God gave me victory. Isn't it how it is that happens? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Because we trust on the Lord. We do not trust in cars and horses. We do not trust on this, the human strength. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we adore you and we praise you, Lord Father, because you, to this day, you have sustained us. You have given proof that you are a living God. You are the one who has been always worried about us. That's what we ask you that you keep with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our service has come to its end. If you still want a prayer, we are here available to give assistance. And I would like to say peace of the Lord to everyone. Thank <laughs> you.